Let's give a round of applause to Judith Lewis. Thank you. Wow. There you go. So this is a question I often ask myself. Who am I? I don't know. I, apparently I'm this person. So this is me. You can look me up online later. We don't care about me. We care about going on and getting to learn stuff. So are you guys ready? Yeah. Excellent. Now, I want to start out with, because I'm talking about hacking links inside and out. What's this hacking links? What am I talking about? What's right and what's wrong in Google's eyes? Because Google is most of the marketplace. So Google is like, you know what, people? Make awesome content, and that's all you have to do. Right? Right? That's all you have to do, for sure, really. No, I experiment with this stuff all the time. I buy links. I do all sorts of stuff with links. And so what I found that works is actually quite different, but stuff that you read online is now bullshit because some of this stuff is online and it's not working anymore. So please don't just do stuff blindly and you'll make lots of money because that's what we're in here for, to make money. What? What works? All these sorts of things do still work. Directories, are she, is she joking? What is this, 2008? They do work. I work in B2B and they do work in B2B. They do not really work well in B2C. They suck really badly. Um, but Google is always telling us, come on people, no buy de linkies. This is a bad thing. But they created this industry of people making, developing, buying links. So if you don't want to do something that's too hacky or black hat or gray hat or whatever, don't think that you can't make a difference. This is the worst thing you can do in English, is a double negative. Don't think you can't make a difference is saying you can make a difference doing white hat techniques. You don't have to buy links. It's not necessary. A lot of people overlook things that could make a difference. First, clean up your website. When was the last time any of you did an audit on your inbound links from outside? Anyone? Bueller? Two people. Geez, that's really not good. Come on, people. There are tools here that will help you with this. It's not hard. So building new links is always sexy and good and exciting, but you really should be cleaning up what you've got coming into your own site. Why? Because some of those links could be going to dead pages. I mean, dead as in 404, not even 301. Some of us are really lazy these days in development. Reclaiming dead links works. So this is what I did with another client. Actually, it was the agency I was working for. And we had a whole bunch of links going into dead pages. Some of them were crap, and I couldn't be bothered redirecting them, but some of them were good. And so I decided to redirect them over time in my downtime. And this is what happened. I had about a 2% response rate to my emails begging people to please change the link. Some links were going through three redirects. I don't care if they're 301 or 302. Three redirects is too much. Too many hops. And look at what we did. For the word beyond, we ended up ranking, I think it was second. So honestly, you can do it. You can honestly do it. It works. It's not black hat. It's just asking people who already linked to you to please link to the real page that actually works now. So besides that, is there any other white hat techniques? I mean, surely that was it. No, it isn't. There is this example for Atrif. No, I would caution you just at this point in time that sometimes I present things that may or may not be advisable. Now, this is one of those things where I stole this from one of the sponsors of this fine conference, and they were talking about looking at dead links to inbound pages, but they were talking about looking at your competitors' dead links. So they said that surely, if you're in competition with someone, maybe they haven't done a backlink audit. Hint, hint, you should do this soon. Maybe they haven't. But we don't do that to other people, right? We're going to do this for ourselves, for our own sites. We're going to audit our backlinks. We're going to fix them, right? Right? Everybody's like, no, man, I'm just going to go after the competition. Screw them. It's, it's, it's my game now. 
But let's see, what else can we talk about that's, you know, white hat, let's say. Let, let, not link buying, which I love to do, but not everybody does. So what else can I give you? Well, improve your internal linking. Have any of you checked your internal links lately, like within the last 18 months, two years, six years? Anybody ever checked their internal? No. I'm, I'm really despondent. I, I'm really disappointed in you people. We have tools here. It will do it for you. It's like six people in the audience have done it. <laughs> Improve your internal linking by not linking through redirects. I had one client, all of their links, you'll see a case study from them later, all of their links went through two redirects. One of them was a 302. And I was like, this is your template. It's not somebody else. You control the links. It's not rocket science. So check your links, people, just in case somebody did something stupid, because you never know. Kevin Indig talked about links from the home page. Again, not a black hat tactic. This is totally legit. Would my dad click that link? Or your, I don't know how old your parents are. My dad is approaching 90. So if my dad would click the link, excellent link. If my dad would not click the link, no good. So think about your internal linking from your home page as well as all your other templated pages, but don't just do it without asking the SEO first. Because sometimes the CEO says, you know what, it's an ugly home page, I want to change it. I'm going to change it and not tell Judith, is what my client said to himself clearly, because I would have said no. Don't do that. So what did he do? He didn't tell me, and that's what happened. This is why we always ask the SEO before we change things, because life is easier that way. It's okay to make mistakes, right? It's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> Maybe not. So what is the trick to ranking better? Is it reciprocal links? I'm not thinking so much. Remember what I said worked earlier. Now some of this, okay, is a little gray, and buying links is definitely not allowed. <laughs> but what about some research? I don't know what's going on with that skull in the bonsai garden there. I'm really confused, but you know, they're on TV, so it made sense. Do some research, look at this, somebody once said, but I work with furniture. What can I do in furniture? 17 ways cats changed the design of furniture. Anybody here have a cat? Some people have cats. Those of you without cats, they claw the edge of furniture. 17 ways cats change furniture. Pimp my slippers. If you have a website that sells bedroom slippers, why not have a tool that pimps them up virtually and then you can buy the new pimped up slippers. There's lots you can do. Do not think that you're in a boring vertical that just doesn't work. It works. If it'll work for weirdest vacuum cleaners through history, it'll work for you. There's nothing harder than that, trust me. Do unique research. Whoa. See, even the TV screen is shocked. It's like, whoa. I can't take these knowledge bombs. I'm gonna shut this down now because someone's gonna stop it. Do some research, original, unique research for your business. It works. It works with this particular tool. Oh, well, this is a service. And what they do is it's cheap as chips to do one question. Multiple answers, but one question. And there you go. You've got unique research that no one else has done and it works. So, once you've done the research, what might the outcome be? Well, in this case, we ranked number two for the keyword loans during the lucrative Christmas period. Now, before you think badly of me, this was a social lender, not a bank, and not a payday loan. Zopa is a social lender, and during Christmas, when people are really feeling the squeeze, we ranked number two for loans by doing unique research and then reaching out to media and we got radio coverage. Don't just think about links, think about the whole picture. It can go big. 
So make it interesting. Well, we made it interesting with this client. They went with, um, what's the best word to start Wordle with? Any of you play Wordle? Yes, some people play Wordle. What is the best word to start Wordle with? Canoe. Hot tip, canoe. Then rotate and then slant. Increase the visibility on those key keywords. This is a site selling ads, right? So ad impressions makes money. So over 100,000 clicks to the page, that's good money. Now, even RuPaul liked that one. Now, what if you're smaller? What if you're B2C and you're not on ads? You want something more practical. Well, I have an example for that. This is a site called Wicked Uncle. Now, before you think, oh yeah, Judith, Wicked Uncle, okay, we all know where this is going. It has nothing to do with adult toys or anything like that. It's, it's <laughs> gifts for children. And what we did is we actually did the secret life of toy designers. What does it take to launch a toy to market? And that was part of an evergreen thing. We launched it for Christmas, but then all of a sudden we got spikes in traffic related to it over summer too. So we actually sold more stuff as a result of a fun piece of research. So we're making the money, honey. It's all about the cash. I want to keep it going. So what do I say? Hack Harrow. Well, don't hack Harrow. I don't mean like actually going in and hacking the website, but do stuff. Think about Twitter and journal requests. That's just happening ambiently in the background. And there's a tool here that can help you with that. Look for Twitter hashtags. Just look at things. Maybe even think about getting expert quotes out to media in Harrow. Now, this is an example from a site called Agency Analytics. And the example disappeared. You can't find this example anymore where they're saying, just go out to like Upwork or something pay people to answer Harrow questions. Maybe it's because they knew they would never be able to compete with Link Affinity. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's shady. Might be. Uh, what else can we do? Dead domains. Dead domains can be revived. They are not dead forever. Buy drop domains at auction, people that have just kind of let it slide. They were like, you know what? I was really passionate about mangoes in 2017, but now not so much. So go, buy drop domains at auction. There's, it's not really that difficult. I know it seems really difficult, it's not. Then go and find the content that used to be there. Do not just scrape the content and republish it. That's not legal, at least for a particular period of time, after which it's okay. Uh, then audit their backlinks just in case it's not a good domain to buy. And then, you can build new content based on your business needs. Even if you're selling mangoes, there's going to be something out there that works for you, honestly. And it's very profitable. Honestly, it works. You can also, maybe we don't call it hack the backlink profiles of other. Maybe we just say, use SEMrush to find out who's linking to the competition and not you. Maybe we just call it that. Yeah, slightly. Uh, look at the competitors. What are they doing that you're not? This is a port company. Um, if you ever go to Porto, they have delicious port. Um, this is a port company. Look at the competitors or competitor sites. Who is linking to them? Don't think about the normal tools. Has everybody, anybody ever used DomI? No, I'm the only black hat in the room, apparently. Well, there you go. So you can use these different tools to see different ways that websites are connected, not just by backlinks. Each tool is going to give you different outputs, so use them all. Because you want to be looking at stuff, then scrape the emails and spam the hell out of them. Or maybe we just use Link Affinity. Maybe. You can also use infographics. How many of you here use infographics for link building? Three people. Oh my god. I hope I am converting you to the dark side of actually doing stuff that is fun and sexy, hopefully. Now, let's see, does it work? Maybe? So if we look at this, the 100 most 
spoken languages in the world. Anybody interested in that topic? except the woman laughing who wrote the article. Anyone in the audience interested in what the 100 most spoken languages? No, everybody's like, fuck no, man, I don't know. This was an incredibly interesting piece, and you can see that it didn't only gain the immediate links that were deliberately and intentionally led to the page, but it gathered organic links over time. Why? Because it's sexy and interesting, and it's a picture. And pictures are easier than reading stuff, which is hard. So it's a picture. Now, in order to not get in trouble, I've changed the next slide to be wine instead of giving too much away about that particular backlink profile. But you can use Google Lens to find who actually took the picture and put it on their site. Why? Backlinks. Gosh, people. There's gin for questions if you can like Get excited. No, he's like, I don't know. I'm just going to stare at you and not smile. <laughs> you can find who has been linking to uh, your competitors' link building infographics through Google Lens. Be careful about doing paid inclusions. They're not as hot as they seem. So I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm just going to buy the link. Don't buy the link. Now, we want to make some money out of this, right? This is all about cash. We want to make money. So, what have I done around links that actually makes us money? She says, looking for Splitzy in the audience who's not looking. So, how have I bought links? This is how I've bought links in the past. These are the kind of links I like to buy. Um, when buying links have a standard set of criteria, I've had to blank out for GDPR reasons, people's email addresses, but I look at how much they're going to charge me, what their stats are like, whether they socially share everything, etc. And then I buy links. And this is an example from a client that has now closed down their B2C operations and have become a lab for testing organics. But that's why I can say, I bought these links, the bought links worked, and here's how we sold more stuff on the back of links we bought. So now what? Honestly, you need to keep checking things. Have you done the basics? I know I was like, we bought these links, we made this money, but have you done the basics? Because if you don't do the basics first, nothing's going to work. Oh, look at that. It's like, oh, we're going to hide it. No more information. Um, important questions you need to ask before you buy links. And I think that we're going to move the needle on white hat link building, especially if you hook up with Link Affinity. Yeah. Excellent. Now I've given myself two minutes because I have gin for questions. Yeah. Does anyone have a question? There's a, a small bottle of gin in it for you. Actually have gin. There's real gin. Do you hear the clink of bottles? Okay, Bibi, what's the question? Um, what was the hardest link you ever got? What's the hardest link? The hardest link? link you ever won that you felt like, yes! The hardest link I ever got where I was really happy about it? I got a link on a website for aviation for a client of mine that's in B2B aviation that got me all of the testing requirements I needed off of one link to do. So it, it covered everything in one link. Okay, I'm going to reverse engineer what that was. <laughs> Thank you. And here's your gin. Yes. There's more gin. Does anyone else have a question for gin? Everybody's like, no, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't realize there was gin. Wait, what? Anybody else have a question? Questions for gin? Gin for questions? Or I'm just going to drink the gin later on. Oh, we have a question. Whoa. I, if I throw the gin at you, I might hurt someone. I just want uh, the gin, but <laughs> how is possible that you are that you have a so amazing presentation? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, you suck up, you get the gin. Can I ask you to give the lovely man thank some you. gin? Thank oh, you. Okay. And, oh wait, there's a question. <laughs> there's still more gin, people. When you try to identify the patterns of links that can be harmful, 
uh, where are your favorite tools and what are those particular criteria that you would say are should be the top ones that we should be looking for? So, uh, yeah. toxic links, what do I look for? There was a slide earlier in the deck from Ophive. Um, I don't know if I can get back to it, no. There's a slide in the deck from Ophive, and Ophive is who I would use. I don't know if you noticed there was like a, a, a ring chart. There we go. This tool is really good for checking for toxic backlinks. SEMrush, also a sponsor here, does have an excellent tool for identifying some toxic backlinks, but I really like Ophive as well because, like I said earlier, multiple different sources of information is really important to identify toxic backlinks. So if you're going to buy a dead domain, check. But if you're also doing some link building that might not be in my deck, and so Judith approved, if you've done something that is not Judith approved, then you might want to check for toxic backlinks. You want gin? Any more? There's one, there's one more, and there's one more bottle for the lovely young woman. I do have a question, but it's not SEO related. I've seen you've used a lot of drag queen memes throughout your presentation. What is your favorite drag queen? Oh, Plastic Tiara. Plastic Tiara is my favorite drag queen, and you should follow her on Twi t TikTok, because she posts some amazing befores and afters, so Plastic Tiara. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.